Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you. Damn, I'm Christian. <laughs> hey, uh, let's do a, a real quick mic check. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, 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 one, we're two, good. three. We can hear you. All let's right, go. everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk Trading with Olympus Capital. It is March, uh, March twenty third, two thousand twenty three. And we're going to go ahead and run one of these episodes back that we did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Fortunately, we had some technical difficulties, um, but we're going to go ahead and go over it again. This time, we're going to get it right. Um, and like I said, we're going to talk about um, the differences between fundamental and technical analysis, as well as the importance uh, of risk management. And... Um, we're going to go ahead and start it off with uh, Trent today, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, I know we start off every week just talking about our trading week and how things have went. And if, if y'all don't know, we ain't been here in a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been like literally three weeks. Yeah, first time back on. I don't know if y'all can tell Jose over here. He's the grinding out at work, fucking on the road. That's right. So so, so who don't know, Jose, uh, where are you at right now, man? <laughs> Currently, man, I'm, uh, I'm leaving Texas. This, I'm trying to get to Louisiana. Uh, yeah. You know, we out here with Holland trying to make some motherfucking money. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah. If y'all tuned in to the last few podcasts, Jose talks about a business that he has outside of trading, and now you're getting to see it live firsthand. So yeah. that's what we're doing. But, anyways, back to the trading week. Go, going. Uh, my whole trading week hasn't been a trading week for the last like two to three weeks. So uh, that's actually something I wanted to talk about today, anyways. Uh, being a trader, uh, trading is not always going to be like nice. It's not always going to be what you want it to be and everything. So life happens. And we're at that point where we're not the millionaire traders where we want to be, but we're working towards that point. And sometimes you have to be responsible and put trading in the back seat whenever you have other things in your life that, that need to take that, um, that front seat and, and the main focus on your mind. So yeah, over the past like few weeks, like two weeks, two and a half weeks, I've been a little bit off the charts, not a little bit, a lot off the charts and, um, focusing more on my life. But, uh, Trading is still obviously a huge part of my life, and it always will be. Just getting myself to the point where I'm at a good point to get back into trading, and it's not like I'm forcing my stuff. Because we've, we've talked about that on multiple episodes before this, not to you know, force your trading, keep your psychology right and everything else. That's but, right. Um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, pass it over to Andrew since I don't have much to talk about yeah, as, um, as trading week goes. But Andrew, we know he has a lot to talk thank about. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. And um, so I definitely like what you said about the um, – you know, trading isn't everything that it seems while you're, you know, in the progress of or on the journey of becoming a, you know, profitable day trader. Um, <clears throat> like he said, um, you know, sometimes you have to put the reality of life first before trading. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so since the last episode about three weeks ago, um, I actually been on the demo working on, on, on my new strategy instead of using a, a live account to where, you know, I have the possibility of, you know, losing the challenge and, you know, making that fail, for example. So what I've been doing is um, I've actually been on demo for the last three weeks since the last show. But since I've been doing um, since I've been on demo on this new strategy, my game has completely, you know, done a 180. Um, I feel like it's been a night and day difference for me. Um, I think I've literally only had two red days in the past, like maybe 21 days or so since like the last show. But um, but yeah, my my training for me has been, you know, through the roof. I'm not sitting here, you know, revenge trading or stressing myself out. I've been making all the right plays. I've been following my strategy. Um, I've really been trying to knock down my psychology. Um, one of my big things that's been helping me a lot is, you know, for example, um, trying to be okay with taking my small red days because that's what's been blowing me up in the past. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to be okay with taking those small red days. And, uh, you know, if I lose two in a row, for example, I'll, I'll walk away. But um, something else to draw on top of that to what I've been doing differently to kind of change my game is keeping my risk on point trying to use the exact same size when I'm going in the exact same stop loss and the exact same take profit. So I'm literally getting my one, uh, my, if I'm, if I, if it's a red trade, it's going to be a one to one, a one to one R loss, right? Yeah. If it's a green trade, it's going to be a one to two. So there's multiple days to where I only take, you know, two trades because that if I, if I lose the first trade, my second trade is going to eat up that one R and give me another R. And, um, when that happens, it's still going to be a percent on the account that I'm doing right now, which is going to be a 50 K account. That'll be my next, uh, my next challenge that I'm going to get back into starting on Monday of next week, because um, I just got back in town from Florida, Miami, actually. And uh, 
that was a fucking blast for those you don't yeah. know. If, if y'all haven't been to Miami, y'all need to go to Miami. Bro, this dude has been like a movie lifestyle. <laughs> Let me tell bro. you, the Adias family oh, knows how to fucking throw down. But um, <laughs> I mean, I was trading even when I was in Miami, bro. Like I wasn't. So Miami is, is a, it's an hour ahead from from Houston. So it gave me like a little bit of more time to, you know, kind of catch up on my rest before I, um, you know, looked at the charts. But I mean, it was it was badass, dude. Like I got to trade in front of my uncle who, you know, I told him when I first started trading like two years ago. And uh, I got to literally trade live live in front of him and kind of show him how I trade and kind of how it works. And it literally, I it blew his mind, honestly, because I made the trades right in front of him. And he was like, is that it? And I was like, that's it, bro. It, it was like a five minute trade and he, it just blew his mind. But um, that felt really good to me to have him see that. And, you know, it kind of felt like he, you know, believed in me a little bit more. But you um, can show it's real. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was really good for me. So um, this past couple of weeks, man, have been a really they've been building my confidence back like there's been no tomorrow like oh and just to let y'all know my boy has all the receipts you can go through his instagram he's been posting no i'm posting i'm posting this shit bro. every single day with the what the what the trades that i'm making uh if it's a red day or if it's a green day like I, i'm posting it so that too i think has been kind of helping me a lot because i'm trying to hold myself accountable because i am posting these so yeah i mean i know i don't want to post a fucking super bad red day or like last pod that we were on to where I made like 22 trades in a day. I know yeah. I don't want to post that and have everybody see that. Well, damn, well, why'd you go back to doing that? Yeah, so but posting that keeps you accountable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's been kind of helping me out, keeping me accountable. But um, yeah, man, my, my trading right now has been through the roof. Um, It is, it's been on demo. I'll throw that out there again. It's been on demo. So like I said, yeah, it's been on demo. So it's not, it's not real as of right now, but sometimes you have to go back on demo just to, you know, fine tune your strategy and get your confidence back up before you go back live again. And my whole experience, dude, of like this whole two years that I've been trading, I hit two years on the 30th this month, actually. So like mm -hmm. another week and a half and I'll have two years of experience in the markets. But that builds my confidence back up so much to when I do uh, go back live again on this Monday, my confidence is gonna be there through the roof. And um, another thing I wanted to say is I've traded demo uh, before and I've never ever had this type of success, even on the demo. So yeah. like, even though it is a demo, like I said, I've traded demo before and I've never had the success that I'm having now with the demo. So this tells me that I'm going towards the right steps. I'm doing something right if I'm seeing this type of success in this demo. So like I said, Monday, we'll be back at it live action and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah. as far as my trading past couple of weeks, man, uh, they've been really good for me, my psychology, my new strategy. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty yeah. much how my, my week's been going. And I hope I hope, the, I hope this really helps the, the viewers get to see, like, again, like we said in almost every pod, like the, the whole point of this pod, not only is it to be educational and informational, but it's also supposed to be something that y'all can relate to. Like, it's not like a, you know, we're, we're, we're not exactly. we're not at the upper echelon of what we want to be. Right. Exactly. Yet we're on that path and people can join that path with exactly us and, and, and save themselves time. But you can see like me, like a trader that. I love trading. I was at a very high point of trading, like with a funded 100K account making money. And now I'm having to put all of that aside and focus on life. Whenever it comes to Jose, you see where well, we got him back on here. He had a uh, cut out for a minute. There yeah, bro. Uh, my bad, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm but yeah, we got these parts, uh, in my, yeah, in my I mean, literally, like, look, dude, like Jose is yeah. literally on a fucking run right now with I a know. load. Exactly. And he's so. sitting here on the pod putting in the work to, you know, to become a trader. Exactly. That's, that's one that's one of the things that I, that I wanted to get at is that, like, I give you credit, dude. Like, you were on vacation, yep. you know, with your family and stuff like that, but you still made the time, right? you know, to, to trade. And exactly. not only did he make the time, you traded better than you've traded in a while Amen. on right. vacation. Amen. That's yep. crazy. Yep. You would think with all those like outside influences. Stuff, and again, I don't want to just recommend this to a beginner trader out there to go on vacation to start trading. You know, yeah, he's yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. a more experienced trader, but still, it's just the fact that with all of that going on, trading is still on the front front of your mind. Yep. It's like, I, I and still then, yeah, I mean, this. keep in mind too, y'all like trading. If you're, it depends how you trade. I mean, at the end of the day, but trading could be a five minute thing. Or it can be like an hour thing or a two hour thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was or trading all day. Yeah, or all day. Yeah. It depends how you trade. But like me, yeah. for example, I mean, I was making my trades in like five minutes and then I'm done and I can spend the rest of the time with my family out there in Miami. So I mean it was that's just the possibility and like the freedom, you know, that trading allows you to get. So like I had posted on my Instagram today, I'm just like, How can you not want to learn this game when it's literally gonna give you so much freedom in your life when you only need, you know, maybe a couple of minutes or a couple of hours of the day to, you know, potentially make someone's salary yeah you know 100%. what i'm saying you know in due time so uh can we get into it a little bit more um explain to the people what uh fundamental analysis is um 
for you know for us that right so I'm, you know I'm like a for a person here that's that's learning from y'all right right so explain to us so fundamental doing. analysis is basically basically going to be you know everything that's going on out in the world so everything that you would you know expect to make the markets move is basically going to be funnel analysis so such as like any news events all the meetings that are coming out you know whenever powell speaks um like the fomc meeting you know that just went CPI, on uh, yeah CPI, cpi like fomc just went on yesterday and right, um right. The charts were going like crazy mm. yesterday, like within the last like two hours of the day. <laughs> what like, did you just say earlier? Whenever we hit McDonald's, a little bit more expensive than it normally was. He said, "Oh, the prices went up." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like we were at McDonald's, and it was like, "Damn, everything went up." And I was like, "Yep, they just uh, raised rates yesterday." So yeah. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, yeah, so f fundamental analysis is uh, basically you know going into all the news shit that's going on out there in the world. Like I know none of us in here are really fundamental analysis traders like like i don't look at the news whatsoever in my opinion mm -hmm. like that's for me that's the way i trade um the only thing that i pay attention to is you know whenever there's going to be big news events coming out such as like fomc or like trends like cpi because those days really do affect the markets and they're a lot harder to play for you so if you're a beginner trader i would definitely recommend not even trading any big news event days so like whenever you know powell speaks or something like that or like we had yesterday fomc like the price action is crazy just because there's so much going on so if you're a new trader i would recommend to not even get into that um and you know more for example about fundamental analysis um i mean you know going deep into the paperwork of, of companies and uh trent has a little bit more to say about that so i'll let him speak on that yeah yeah so i was gonna say uh whenever fundamental analysis like if we're gonna talk about it it's not just it's not like one size fits all so right. there's like all types of different styles of trading um there's you know options trading there's forex trading there's futures trading there's all those types of different things so different news events will affect different things differently so like whenever it comes to uh to forex trading like if you're trading foreign currencies like the us dollar versus the yen you know so on and so forth you would be paying more attention to um you know nfp or uh, the GDP of a country, which is uh, the gross domestic product, is like how much things cost in that country, whether it's up or down, whatever things may be. Um, whenever you're looking at like, let's say you want to do long term for, uh, I don't know, you want to buy long term stocks in Apple or long term stocks in something. You want to look at uh, Apple's earnings, Apple's balance sheets, things like that, like how they're looking at how they're looking on the long term, how their business is performing on the long term. And then some of these other things like, you know, um, CPI and FOMC and something like that. Th those are your more volatile, like that news comes out every month or, yep. you know, it, it, it's always changing. You know what I'm saying? So uh, different news is affect or different news events affect different things differently. So I just wanted to put that out there so people can. Right. Know, so like, for that. example, like a, a news event more than likely won't affect, you know, a small cap stock versus it would a big cap stock. You know, small cap is, you know, a stock under $10, like, you know, like a penny stock, for example, like a lot of people like to get a whole bunch of shares. Like, like my uncle, when I was uh, out there in Miami, for example, um, he was showing me i believe it was like an otc i want to say but um it was like point it was like 0 0.0012 like cents and i was just like and i saw the chart and it literally looked like a from like a year ago whenever COVID had came it had pumped and dumped and you know a lot of people these days um a lot of people these days still believe that you know a lot of these previous pump and dumps that happened because of COVID have a possibility of going back to those highs that what it was at just because they see it in the chart in the past but in reality like i even told him i was like i don't really think that's going to be a good play or an opportunity for you because i mean if you look at when it exploded it exploded whenever COVID happened yeah. and if you keep in mind when COVID happened everything exploded and also if you're a trader and you got appreciation for trading which you know we put in the work enough right. to have that appreciation for it you don't want to be i mean i'm not saying you don't want to be because money's money bro money's nice but it's right. like you want to be like i earned that i worked for it exactly. I know exactly how i got it right. instead of oh i got kind of lucky exactly the, and that's you know, exactly what up. i told him i told him i was like you know so with this kind of trade like this is a, a lottery ticket right here this is a you just pray that this goes up maybe in the next year or so and and if it goes up it has to fucking skyrocket in like a day because that kind of stock isn't gonna you know go up 10 percent each day like regardless so like that type of shit right there was literally like i told him i'm just like I don't I can't give you any type of financial advice with that because yeah. I'm for me if I were to look at that chart I wouldn't even put, have it up for more than two minutes yeah and then also I'd like to say too like you know we went into it earlier as far as like you know different things different news events affect different styles of trading whatever um it really comes down to like the style like the whether you're a scalper or a swing trader whatever, right. or whatever that may be I would go as far to say like news events are mainly 
more for you know intraday to scalping or not yeah. not intraday to scalping intraday to intraday to swinging. Whenever I'm talking about scalping, like yes, I could get a somewhat of a bias from the news events and stuff, but like like we like we do, you say the like five minute trades, ten right, minute trades, exactly. so things like that, like. The news events aren't really playing the biggest role in that. Like, you know, yeah. you, could, you can find still setups long or short, whether exactly. it's an extremely short bias day or an extremely long bias day. Right. So, um, again, it just depends on the type of trader you are. But like like you were saying, like, if you wanted to say, like, hey, like, what do you think about this company or this stock or whatever? It's like, I might not be able to tell you anything 100%. about 100%. Because it's like, I, I don't need to see that. I just exactly. see the chart, drop it down to the five minute, yep. let me find a setup, boom. You know exactly. Yeah. So, so I tell people all the time, like I have people at work who ask me, they're like, oh, you know, what's a good stock to buy right now? And it's like, I can't tell you that because I don't invest for the long term. Like I can't I can't tell you what something's going to do next week, next month or, you know, in the next year. I can right. tell you what it's going to do in the next fucking 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But not, you know, like the next year. So, I mean, if you want to if you want to be a day trader, I can I can help you there. And that's why we're going to start having like. We're getting back into this whole podcast group. This is the first one that, you know, shake the rust back off That's or right. whatever. Yeah. And then once we start getting back into this, bro, we're going to have some good guests for y'all. Yeah, we definitely we do have some having, people that uh-huh. have some fucking knowledge, bro. Yep, like, yep. And if we're talking about long-term stuff, you know Justin has the knowledge on exactly, all that long Exactly, exactly. Shout out to you, uh, Justin. Yeah, if you're what listening. Yeah, you what's up? Yes, sir. Yeah. What about Jose, you, bro? bro? Come on, tell us something about yourself. Come on, you, you've been you've been quiet back there. Did we, did nah, we go bro, over Jose? Uh, yeah. I, I, know a, I know there's a slight lag from the time that I talk to the time that y'all hear me, so I'm just kind of taking everything in. No, um, it actually uh, it's we perfect. can hear you yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, tell us yo, about yo. your uh, fundamental analysis. Yeah. So uh, just to get into my my two cents on the fundamentals, because uh, I started getting into fundamentals when I was trading a lot of stocks and stock options. What I look at, like how y'all y'all said it, it's a lot of news event. It's what's going on in the market. Oh, he's a little he's technical a, difficulty. A little, little bit, a little bit of a cutout right there. One of those, yeah, uh, but uh, your signal, man, if he, before he comes back, um, he was basically saying that he was getting into you know the fundamental side of uh trading whenever or the fundamental side of yeah trading whenever he was first starting to trade and I think we all kind of took that route whenever we first started trading too because when yeah. I first started trading I was swing trading and you know holding on for like a week or so I was yeah. doing that at first but. I realized that wasn't going to work for me. If I wanted to make an actual career out of trading, then I had to learn how to make money every day in the market. Right. 100%. And this is what we talked about before, too, finding the style that fits you best. Right. Oh, wait, we got him back. We got him back. You can talk. Yeah, you can hear check, check. Yeah, there you go. All right, yeah, All right back. My bad. As I'm driving through these woods, man, ain't, ain't no... <laughs> no, yeah, hey, you're, hey, you're making that fucking bag, baby. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, with fundamental analysis, man, you got to pay attention to everything that's going on in your economy. So... It's good for the trades that you're trying to take, but it's also really important to know what's going on so that you know when not to trade. Like you were speaking on FOMC and CPI data and everything that comes out. Um, you want to be in the know as to what, what news are going to drop and when they're going to drop. And if, if you right. want to partake in that. Uh, yeah, because, you know, one thing also. Um, yeah. All right, you're kind of breaking up like a little bit. Uh, when it comes to small caps, yeah, bro, my bad. I'm trying, right, to, I'm trying, but, to, um, I'm trying to get this all in before I cut out. No, you're good, <laughs> no, you're good brother. You're good. You're good. It's, it's coming like in and out a little bit, but we're, we're catching chunks and pieces, yeah. and I'm trying to follow up with what they're saying whenever uh, you break out a little bit. But, um, yeah, but you know, I- most people. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, yeah, what I was saying is uh, basically just that, you know, uh, the, the fundamental analysis is good to know what's going on in your economy for whatever asset you're trading. So you know when to be in the markets and when not. Is the volatility going to be something that I want to play with or is it something that I want to stay away from? Just depending on your strategy and your style of trading. Right. And then uh, people don't realize that you do not have to trade every day. Like if you don't, you, there's definitely days that where you're not going to trade. Like there's going to be days that your setup isn't there. There's going to be days when your psychology isn't there. And whenever your psychology isn't there, it's better to not even open up the charts. If you wake up in the morning and you just feel like shit, you have a shitty mood and you just, there's you're no just market. not feeling it. Then I would recommend to not even trade because that more than likely it's, it's going to be a red date. You know what I'm saying? And then you're already on edge with your emotions. So, I mean, 
and in that case, you don't even need to trade. So you don't even have to trade every day, like Jose is saying. When you know these news events are going on, you know it's going to be super volatile. Then you know, you know, maybe I shouldn't even trade this day. Maybe I should. You know, it, it, it all goes, you know, to yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then just to give you all um, a couple of resources to uh, to look at. I, I, we did this on it. So, OK, just to give you a little rundown, too. We've done this podcast one time already. And it was a, yeah, so it the was mics, a better yeah, podcast. The mics uh, actually weren't recording. Uh, everybody yeah. was here in the building, but the mics weren't recording. You know, shit just happens sometimes. You know, it is what it is. Hey, but regardless, uh, the I had good, a, the bad, the ugly. I had a, a more decent list and was a little bit more prepared whenever it comes to this. But we'll just go and wing it how it is. But um, what I use personally is Market Watch. I don't know. Right. Right. What anybody else uses. But hey, Market Watch is free. Yeah, so it's free, and I, I'm just leave it at that at Market Watch because you don't need to use anything else. It right. has everything. So yeah. whenever you want to check your news events or, or whatever it may be, you can be on Market Watch, and you can check news events for anything and everything you can possibly think of. It's not just your stocks or whatever. You can check news events for forex, news events for yep. for what's going on in fucking Argentina or something like that. Like right. you get you you know what's happening over there. What, what's their GDP looking like? What, what what are their economic you know roles playing? Economic speakers doing whatever whatever it may be. But yeah, so you'll know the days of, you know, it literally says the timestamps of like, yep. you know, at 9 a.m. This is dropping. This is dropping. This is dropping. Whatever. And that's so, really you know. important, too, because like if some news comes out in like the middle of the trading day. Yeah. Anything can ha like anything can happen. The moves that go on in the middle of the trading day, you know, like let's say uh, CPI numbers come out like in the like at fucking 12 o'clock. The volatility is insane. So like if you don't know what time that is and you're in a trade during that time. You can you can blow up if you don't have oh, any stop so, losses set. So, so fucking so would, easy. Would you yeah. say that these are some of the resources that I use? Yeah, so he uses Market Watch a lot. And like for me, I definitely use Twitter every single day. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah bro. And, uh, FinTwit, bro. Yeah, and and FinTwit too. So I've game. actually haven't even stepped foot into FinTwit yet. But like for well, me, you have because yeah. you're in the trading section of, of Twitter. Well, yeah, I guess. That's yeah. FinTwit. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I so for me, like I follow um I follow traders who I guess I idle. And yeah. a lot of these guys are usually posting on that, you know, posting what's going on in the world as far as like, you know, trading related news. Um, but another good page to follow on Twitter is definitely um, Unusual Whales. They are super, super solid. That's They've been gas. around for a couple of years. That's um, gas right there. Everybody who's anybody in trading uses them. So, I mean, it, and it's free. It's it's everybody has a Twitter these days. And I mean, if, if you're a trader, you need a Twitter. And the cool thing about Unusual Whales, too, is like, well, let's say you, you know, let's say you're on Market Watch and, you know, they say the Fed's going to speak today or whatever right. happened. Right. Like. Sometimes you don't know how to take some of that information. Like, yeah. And the, another cool thing about Market Watch too, and a lot of these other, re again, just like it doesn't take much. Just a little quick Google search, uh, uh, you know, uh, a new news news outlet for trading or whatever it may be, and you'll find stuff. But um, a lot of these things will tell you how important certain news events are. Like you'll yeah. have like a green or uh, yellow if it's medium, or you know, red if it's not that. Or, you right. know, you know what I'm saying? Like it, they ha they all have their own different colors. Yeah, like the ranges. But they'll explain to you how important some of these things are. But whenever you're talking about something like unusual whales or some of you know the, the more more trustable figures and uh, right. into it and things like that, like a lot of times they'll break those things down for you. Like, yep. like sometimes the stuff that Powell talks about, it's like holy shit. Like you know, some of this stuff. Yeah, like, because I don't know, it's like know trying to crack on. the fucking Da Vinci Code whenever Powell speaks, because yeah. you, like he he has to word things so carefully because what he says it's literally gonna affect the entire world 100%. so everybody like he, he'll say something but he means uh, the complete opposite, opposite of what he's saying yes, so like bro. you know people twitter really helps you kind of you know break down what he's saying and what he really means behind the word that he's saying because he he he's fucking confusing i'm not gonna lie like i've heard like a couple of his speech uh, now now i don't necessarily watch it at all like I yeah. just I just know that it's uh, a day that he's um, speaking, so I'll just kind of be on my toes with that. Yeah, I'll try to get in and get out like a little bit quicker. I'm more on the side of what you were talking about yeah. earlier, like like I'll be on Fintwit or something like that, and I'll right. see like you know, yeah, like I'll see what somebody like, some, if the, the pal talks, somebody's talking about it. Exactly, like, like, there's exactly. gonna be somebody exactly. talking about. It. They're gonna yeah. be like, oh, well, he said this, or oh, fucking pal said, I, I don't know, fucking <laughs> eggs right. going up, eggs prices are going up, whatever it may be, fam. Like what, whatever it, it'll it is, be, it'll be talked about. All yeah, time. exactly. Somebody's so, already lacing you up on it, so, you, so it saves someone, you the time of watching. For someone that's barely like getting into this, what um, these resources that you're using, what uh, information can they? 
everything yeah, we solid, just talked about. Basically, yeah. all your fundamentals. Everything. Yeah, all your fundamentals. Everything. And um, then also, too, uh, you can get a lot of the technicals, too. That's what we're going to roll into in the yeah, next part of this podcast. Yeah, I that. guess we can just, you know, flow into it like that. Right. Um, yeah, because those are the technical ones. Yeah, so technical, yeah. that's that's where it gets a little bit spicy. That's yeah. that's where the fun is at. That's whenever... Uh, that's what you see uh, people charting and all that. That's that's where the fun is at. Yeah, that's where and, the money's at. And you can really see, like, it will really open your eyes up to how many different styles of trading there really is. Because, like, right. you'll see motherfuckers with all types of lines, everything on their chart. Yep. And you're like, what the fuck? You'll see other people with every indicator in the world they can imagine. You'll see other people with just a blank screen and a volume indicator. Yep. Like, you'll see all these different types of traders. And they're all... You know, they all million, work. They're all millionaires in, yeah, in they their all respective work. fields. Like yeah. every every one of them is doing something right. It's just it just goes to show there's so many different ways to crack this code of this market, and yep. there's so many ways to to make money on it. But yeah, I mean, follow, find who who best fits you. Like if, if there's somebody on YouTube that you're following that you're getting your advice from, I guarantee you he has a Twitter. There's no yep, way he doesn't. There's, there's almost a hundred percent he has a Twitter because Fintu is a huge part of trading. So once you see that, go follow his Twitter. Keep up with the things he's doing, bro. If he's what is he watching? Why is he watching it? Why why is stuff moving? Why did he win today? Why is he losing today? They, they'll talk about all those things. Right. Uh, I know me, one of me and Jose's favorite, obviously ICT. I love watching him on Twitter just because he does a full breakdown every morning of everything. Like I mean, like minute by minute breakdown. Right. Not right. that you're not gonna get this from everybody, but you know, find somebody that you like that that fits you. But this guy fits me. Like he, every morning, every minute, whenever something's going down, he's saying, hey, "I'm watching this order block. It's moving here." buy a switch like it's like a live up-to-date data and he right. also records everything live so you can watch the shit live on uh, twitter spaces if you want to right but um yeah so just, there's it's just cool to be able to learn there's a right. lot of educational content out there. there's a lot of free educational content you don't have to go out there and buy somebody's fucking two thousand dollar course whenever you're first starting off whenever you're first starting off you need to just learn the very very basics of how this shit works you don't have to go spend money on a course we i believe we all here uh, I know me and Jose went to fucking YouTube University for most of our career so far. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm more, mostly YouTube University. Yeah, but I definitely draw some bread. Yeah, on the courses. YouTube University is where it's at, and people are super sleep these days. We're in fucking 2023, dude. Everything is online for free. Like, if you really want to learn something, and I tell this all the time, like, there's people who uh, who will hit me up, like, you know, wanting to learn how to trade, and I tell them all the time, I'm just like, well, if you really do want to learn how to trade, you're gonna learn how to trade. Like you're gonna take the time, you're gonna do what it takes right. to learn how to trade. You know, and, just and like we done. Not everybody's a way of trading works for everybody. Exactly. You, you gotta but do your Trent, own way. Of dude, works for Trent you. and Jose, I don't. They don't trade the same as me at all. Right. At like we trade a hundred percent differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like a hundred percent. Like I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> we just fucking trade a hundred percent different. Yeah. Like they'll be talking about some shit. They'll be talking about uh, like like what do y'all be saying? For example, um. Like it's coming up to like, some like we, level we, and we, shit. yeah we talk about like order blocks yeah like uh, order blocks order and blocks, in my head value gaps yeah balances I'll be like on the that, headphones yeah. and I'm just like what the fuck is an order yeah. block I'm like what, yeah. what are y'all looking at so I, it's like more smart money but now we yeah. move more to ICTs but concepts. I say but it works that, for them yeah I say yeah. that because there's a lot of people that think. Oh, okay, well, there's a formula to this. No, but trading is fucking black and gray. There but this is, is very formula. arguable, though. This is very arguable. So whenever, not to be like that, like nitpicky motherfucker, but whenever it comes to like the person that we watch, he is a very big believer that there is an algorithm that runs the market. Yeah, so, he's he's a uh, he's definitely had he has you know the credibility behind him too. Yeah, so yeah. Like, and again, know, I'm not I'm not yeah. I, I'm this is just somebody that I fuck with, so I'm putting it out there for my personal you know beliefs. But like you know, don't follow what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be that. way. if you got something that's working. Do what you're doing, right? Bro, you right. Know what I'm saying, like but, for uh, example, I I kind of dipped my toes in the whole ICT thing, and then I kind of just knew off bat like it just wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah. Like it just wasn't for <laughs> me. Like I just needed to fine tune what I had going on because it was working. It just wasn't working at the level that I wanted it to. Yeah. And these past couple of weeks, I've you know kind of tweaked it a little bit and find out what I can do differently to make it better. And it's been fucking, it's been night and day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's what works for me and my personality. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all's personality, that's what works for y'all. There's a million, we said this before, there's a fucking million ways to trade. You just got to figure out what works for your personality. But um, to get a little bit deeper into like technical analysis though, um, like I know for technicals, like for my charts, I only use three indicators. I use uh, VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price. I use the 200 EMA and I use the 20 EMA. And that's it. That's all I use. Um, and now I necessarily I use those as kind of. Mm, 
I want to say I use those as kind of like a judgment of where the direction is going. You know what I mean? Because okay. I'm not trying to sit here and hold for like a 20 minute position. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like my ideal time zone is like like two to you know 10 minutes. That's kind of what what I go for. But um, as far as that, I use levels, and then that that's pretty much it. Just for uh, just to give the the guest like a you know the host or not the host or the host to give yeah, the viewers the to give the view that yeah the viewers a little rundown before we get like too deep into technical analysis and we're gonna start talking about indicators and all that I want them to at least understand what it is for if there's anybody that yeah doesn't. let's get it yeah so uh, technical analysis is really like just paying attention to your candlesticks and the open high lows of a uh, open high low and the close of a candle so I don't know if y'all know what that is but like every candlestick shows the opening price. The highest that uh, that price got to within that right. time frame, whether it's a five minute candlestick, that would be the highest the price got within five minutes, the hours, so on and so forth. And the lowest it got in that candle and then where it closed at. Right. So it'll show you that's where you have the wicks and then you have the body. I'm not going to go super in detail like I'm teaching it, but that's something that you're going to be focusing on whenever it comes to technical analysis. And you're going to use that and add on to that and find patterns. So like you'll have like multiple of those candlesticks forming and right. you find a pattern in the market. Once you find a pattern that repeats itself over and over again and it has a high probability of a certain outcome, then that's whenever you start, you know, attacking that right. setup, whether it may be a flag pattern, whether it may be a bat pattern, whether right. it may be a head and shoulders, whatever it is, right. that's technical. So just right. in case y'all don't know what technical analysis is, there's a very fine line between technical and fundamental. Right. Fundamentals, your news events, everything like that. Technical is really just the patterns that you're looking for in the market. Yes, you like right now we're getting more deep. Yeah, into we'll get it, into it. Yeah. You know, indicator, you know, whatever it right. may be. It just, obviously, like, you know, whatever fits you as a trader. But um, yeah, you know, I just wanted to put that out there so people know, like, it's not just, you know, it's not just, oh, I throw some indicators on my chart. Like, exactly. like technical analysis is really, you know, specific to, right. to what it is. And then yeah. so I w also want to say, like, another key difference, though, between, you know, fundamentals and technical is uh, with fundamentals, it's, you don't really have to do much you know you just have to read and listen with technical analysis technical analysis comes with getting screen time so it comes with you know staring at the screen for hours a day because now our eyes are trained to recognize what's going on in front of the computer mm -hmm. screen for somebody who's never looked at candlesticks they're not going to know what the hell they're looking at right. whatsoever but we've been looking at it for so long we have mm -hmm. enough screen time to recognize what's going on with these candles and they don't just look like red and green sticks going up and down to us anymore and like it's, it's crazy how technical and fundamental analysis play so hand in hand right. together because like whenever we were on our trading shit and we like you know like every day like completely on it i know you've been on it like the past yeah. weeks but i to say whenever we've all been a group like you know on our discord. yeah on discord every day yeah and also look you know shout out to the viewers or whatever if y'all ever want to hop on discord with us bro shoot us a i actually have a few of, people who've been messing me yeah. messaging me about it yeah shoot yeah. us a dm shoot any get in contact with us anyway i'll put all of our socials up somewhere whenever we get everything posted uh, definitely on our youtube for sure but um get in contact with us dude you can it, it's free completely free if you want to join and talk it's free fucking, now shoot the shit i better get it now before yeah. we get funded because yeah, once yeah. we get funded <laughs> once you get funded uh, uh, the prices go up the like, price gonna go up the fuck <laughs> anyways then, uh, yeah. one, one thing i just wanted to throw in there real quick is like uh Technical analysis is like the historic analysis of price data. So we're yeah, looking right. at like a what, visual representation. What, yeah, we're looking at a visual representation of what price was doing, you know, in the last minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. And we're using that to form a, a thesis as to what we think price is going to do in the future. Um, mm. I took the time last year and I made a little crash course as to how to read candlesticks, how to read charts. Um, it also goes into options a little bit, but I made that and it's like, everything that I had learned up until that point and I put it all in one place. So we're going to link that in the bottom as well. Um, just use it as a, as a reference. If you, if you need to have any questions on it, like I like y'all said, bro, feel free to shoot us a DM, a, a message or something. And, uh, we can get y'all live into the Discord so y'all can trade with us and stuff. But that's I'm gonna odd, that, bro. I'm gonna put that yeah. in the description as well so that you yeah, guys 100%. can go ahead and start learning on that. I can it's guarantee so you by the end of next week we're gonna have like 20 people in our shit. Oh, 100. percent And it's so awesome that he's even putting that out there because this was not planned, guys. Just so y'all know, all, that yeah. wasn't planned for him to do that. Like I, I've seen it, I've already walked through it. Like that, the little course that he made, and it's actually freaking fire. This dude, put, no, yep. they, he put weeks of his time into this course and he's giving it out for free. For free. So, so that's, and he that's, could really be charging like three, four hundred bucks for this hell, course. Yeah. And it's just it's just a breakdown of it, bro. It's literally a breakdown of everything from like the from if you don't know shit about trading to the more advanced things about trading. Exactly. Like, it took a lot of his fucking time just to do, and he did it for his friends originally. Like it was a friends that wanted to learn how to trade and stuff like yep. that, and he was trying to put them on game. But so, that's that's usually what happens. Full advantage of that. 
But now, um, now this is the thing. We also before we we'll, we'll I want to touch up on this. So there we've already had a lot of people, you know, go through the cycle of we we've already tried to, you know, teach people that, you know, this is like legitimately you just got to put in a time and the effort and, you know, this will happen. But we've tried to put so many people on and they just fucking bail like last minute. So if you're going to jump into our discord, like we're not over here to fuck around. You know what I'm saying? Like we're actually trying to do this and like it kind of pisses me off when, you know, people say they want to learn and they'll be active for like three or four days and then they'll just disappear. So if you do want to get into our discord and you do actually want to learn, keep in mind what I just said, like, we will kick you out of there if you're actually not trying to learn. Like yeah. this is for people who are trying to learn because eventually this is going to be a paid discord room that you're already going to be in for free. Yeah. And this so, is a community of trainers. You know what I'm saying? We're here to help each other. It's not supposed to be some fucking, Oh, I just, I'm a wing this shit in half. Exactly. Like, no, this is like, it, you treat it like a business. Like yeah. this is something that you like, really care about. Right. It, 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 you only want serious motherfuckers around you. Like, like us, like we that's have, what I'm saying. we keep good motherfuckers around us and that's why we keep elevating. But yeah. I want to keep that instead of having some. Exactly. Know, yeah. I, so I like, what you're yeah, like don't come in here and try to half ass it because we will let you know that yeah. you're half assing it. You 100%. know what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm not, we're not also saying like, it's going to be some serious ass shit. Like we can go in there and chop it up, bro. we chop it up and shoot the shit. Every bro, we bullshit on there. voice every yeah. other day. You know what I'm saying? Really? All we're saying is be there. That's all it is. Be there. You want to if you want to be a part of it be there show up you know be cons- you consistent be consistent yeah. all right be consistent but yeah fucking uh i'm saying fucking <laughs> it. anyways uh back to what i was trying to say earlier whenever i was saying fundamentals and technicals go hand in hand i know for a fact you can relate to this whenever we were all on the charts over and over again just watching spy every day knowing yep. what was going on with spy every day or for us it was like the e-mini but still it's, they move this right way. right so regardless whenever we see that every day and we've been in you know, in cahoots with that every day for the past like month, you yep. know, two months, three months, four months, whatever it is, you know what's going on fundamentally, kind of. Exactly. Like, you know, you're in a more bearish market just because right. you've been seeing the patterns. You know, you're in a more bullish market because you've been seeing the patterns. Like, they just they tie in so perfectly together, fundamental and technical. 100%. Like, 100%. You, 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 like I said, like, it's not just you know what's going on in the markets, you know what's going on in the real world now. Like whenever you see like the price is dropping on a whole bunch of shit, like you know what's going on in the real world. Whenever yep. you see inflation's up and you see that that's affecting the charts, you know that you know gas and everything else is going to be up. Everything yep. else is going to cost you, you know what's, money. You know what's going on. And yeah, it's good the to housing be, it's, market, yeah. cars, whatever. Everything. It it's, yeah, you're literally you're in the middle of the shit. Whenever yeah. you're a trader, because you have to know what's going on. Well, and it's also funny too. Whenever you hear like people who don't know too, like you know, like people will be having a conversation like, "Damn, bro, the prices of cars are just crazy," and they don't even Damn. know why. Yeah, and it's like. I could tell you why. Like, let's talk like, about it. Like, it you know? fucking yeah. blows my I'll have people coming into the restaurant. They'll be, why is the food getting so expensive, this and that? Yeah. Well, motherfucker, and, uh, infl- have you heard about inflation that's going on? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard the raising <laughs> rates every other fucking month? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so, <clears throat> another thing that people want to ask about is uh, risk management. Yeah, that is the number one. Uh, I can definitely touch up on that. And I think that's what's really has been fucking changing my game these past three weeks. Like I had just said, um, whenever we were doing my intro, um, I have the same risk management for every single trade. I go in with the exact same size. And I, if I lose a trade, I know I'm losing the exact same amount of money every single time. This is where this is where I believe your uh, your journaling or your journal, your uh, every what you do every day. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know so I mean? so you attack every day almost the same. Right. In that disciplined manner. Right. So I mean, tech, so I mean, risk man. So let's say. Like I'll, I'll use my, you know, position sizing and, you know, dollar sizing for this 50K funded account that I'm going to start um, on Monday again. But I've been on the demo for these last three weeks. Right. So for me, my one to one R is a, is four hundred. I'm, I'm willing to risk four hundred dollars every single trade. So if it hits four hundred dollars, then my stop loss is four hundred dollars. If it's four hundred dollars, I'm, I'm out of the trade right. and my take profit is eight hundred dollars. So. That's, you know, that's my risk. That's what's been working for me as far as risk management. And I take that exact same setup every single time. Like I place a trade, it's the exact same. So it's not, you know, like, well, there, there will be some times to where you're like, you know, I'll, I'll take the profit like a little bit earlier. Like if I'm already in profit from the trade before, mm-hmm. but that's, you know, pretty much the ideal risk manager for what I have going on for right now. So uh, like, let's say today, if I were to lose two trades in a row, that would have been an $800 loss. Um, if I would have lost a trade, won a trade, that's a $400 gain on the day. So risk manage it, risk management is basically knowing exactly how much you are uh, willing to risk, um, exactly how much uh, you know you're gonna gain. But it's it's really based around how much you're gonna you're willing to uh, lose because you always want to know exactly how much you're gonna lose if you lose. There's people out here who you know they'll stay in a trade and 
they'll just hold on the loser for until it keeps on going down and down. But that's also, you know, having to do with their self discipline of right. not accepting the loss. You have to learn to accept the loss. And, psychology. Yeah, it's, it's it's dude. Trading is fucking ninety percent psychology, man. Yeah, as corny like, as that sounds, you, it, you're gonna hear it everywhere, <laughs> over and over again. It, and you're not you know, gonna believe it nine times out of ten. That's, that's the way exactly it is, bro. It is. You can be a badass technical analysis trader. You can be a badass <laughs> fundamental trader, but if you don't have your psychology down, you're not gonna make it whatsoever, dude. You're gonna lose your shit whenever you're in a red trade. Like, and real quick, I'm going to talk a little bit about risk management yeah. too, but just something that I missed from the technical side that I wanted to throw out there for you guys is the time of day right. when you're trading is so, so, so important. Because you're whenever it comes to like volatility and things right. like that, like you're not going to see any movement in the market if you're trying to trade SPY at fucking 12 in the morning, like over the counter. Like you're not not 12 in the morning. Yeah, 12 in the morning. Yeah, because I'll be at night. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, bro, I have to do a little. <laughs> you know, no, me and you both. <laughs> yeah. But fucking anyways, yeah, it's just like pay attention to the time today you're trading. And this is, you know, this goes for everything, whether you're trading yeah. stocks, Forex, whatever it is, the, the times will be different. But, you know, find what times of day the market moves the most. Find what time of the day the most news events are happening. Right. Find, you know, that's whenever the most volatility is in the market. That's whenever the market's moving how it really should be moving. Right. And you're going to get those setups and see those patterns. Exactly. But, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there real quick on technical. I know we're talking about risk management. Yeah, but shift. we'll throw out an example real quick on yeah. that. Like, so, for example, um, like the way that we trade and what we look for and what most traders these days are looking at um, – the New York Stock Exchange market, right? So they open at 8.30 here um, mm. in Houston, Texas. So it opens at 8.30 and it closes. It doesn't close until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah. But we're only trading like an hour of that whole day. Oh, yeah. Why, why Why? Why don't we trade that entire day if we have the opportunity to trade the entire day? Yeah. Why? Because the hot time is going to be from market open to about 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and the reason- That's when the hot time is. And the reason that is, that's like whenever people, that's like people, like whenever you feel on Wall Street or whatever, that's whenever they start their day as far as like right. on the floor. And then around like that 11 a.m. mark for us, which is really like 12 for them, right. that's whenever they're going to lunch. That's like, right. Like it, there's motherfuckers that really have a real job that are real traders that are really on the Wall Street floor. Exactly. That, that really go to those businesses and those buildings yep. and that, that's what they do. Yep. So, and they go take a real lunch break just like the, every yep. normal person. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, like, just keep that in mind. Like, yeah. They, they, we're doing this shit, but we're just doing it at home in our fucking underwear sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all be wearing underwear? I'll be in that whole butt naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, oh, I just wanted to put that out there for you guys so y'all know good. that. But uh, I don't want somebody trying to go. I, I don't want somebody trying to get on spy at fucking 3 oh, p.m. or 2 2 30 p.m. and wondering why the volatility why is not there. Right, right, exactly. And it's like there's reasons for that. The, the market's slowing down. It's about to close. There's again. nobody there. Yeah. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody knows it's about to close. It's just you don't. You know now, don't get me wrong. You can still definitely get some crazy moves. Like in the last, like you know, they call it power hour because you can get some crazy moves in the last hour of the market. But I mean. It's it's literally just better to play it safe and trade whenever everybody else is trading, pretty much. Yep, a hundred percent. Yeah. So as far as that risk management goes, I know you're saying it was helping you a lot. Um, just so y'all guys know, like the one of the main benefits of risk management, like especially if you're risking like you know one percent per trade or whatever, and you're hitting those like you know one to three targets, one to two targets, whatever. Like you will, if if you stick to that, which is very hard to stick to, it's a lot easier said than done. Facts. But you will almost always be in the positive because you have what three or four trades to lose before you're at break even every time so that, that's what keeps you above water is risk management it's actually one of the most important things whenever it comes to trading and it ties hand in hand with psychology but it's just very hard to it, it seems like it's super easy to just you know risk this amount every time but it's very very fucking hard you're to, a human to, being to, to keep it like yeah. that you know what but, I'm saying? Um, yeah, and you know, whenever it comes to risk management too, like it, it's the numbers you're seeing on the screen. Like it depends on how high your risk is, whatever it yep. is. But like, it, this goes for going in profit and for going, you know, negative or whatever. Whenever you're, whenever you're up a few thousand dollars, like that's a, that's a very emotional thing. Exactly. Like it, and then I love that you said that. Um, I, one of my buddies, Kevin, uh, he actually just I I, I forgot to tell y'all, but he actually just passed his hundred K FTMO account. And, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, shout he, out, hey, Kevin, shout out Kevin. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's and, hard, uh, bro. I actually grew up with this guy, and uh, like literally in my old neighborhood, from like like eight years old to like 13, 14, like we literally grew up together. And uh, for us to kind of reconnect these days, and you know, he's and see him, you know, becoming a trader, which is you know what we're all doing, it's just like it's kind of surreal. But um, he actually just passed his FTMO uh, 100K account, and literally one day, he sent me the screenshot yesterday. So he's just doing like the next little nine days, like little bullshit trades. Um, 
But nah, but but shout out to him. I uh, I low key forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh no, you I forgot you went what over I was it going. about his little hundred K. Nah, it was definitely it was wild. definitely something else. But um, fuck, I totally forgot what I was gonna something say about the hit. What he had just talked about. It's good. Don't worry. Nah, it's whatever. Yeah. But um, but no, nah, we're definitely gonna have a uh, Kevin on the pod. I had already uh, I talked to him about it already. Um, just to have somebody else kind of like in the same boat that we're in. Um. Yeah, so we'll get him on the pod soon, but just wanted to throw that out there as well. And speaking of that, as far as like the 100K goes, I know y'all, you, I mean, y'all are the only people I got to show it. But whenever all my life stuff happened and I had to slow down on trading, um, I tried to trade a little bit towards the end of that and uh, took some hits that weren't, you know, good. So I, I was a little bit negative on my account. And uh, I think I had like maybe 14 more days left before my account was going to be over with or whatever. And if y'all don't know what, like, you know, FTMO, like they have a really blessed rule where, if you're at break even or above at the end of your um your uh cycle of trading, like w- whether it's a 30 day account or whatever it may be, 30 day challenge, whatever it is, uh, they'll give you a new challenge completely for free as long as you're in profit or break even. So uh, I was blessed enough last week to get myself back above break even before the end of that. So now I have a fresh 100k challenge to work with. Well, and uh, you know, and I mean for those of you who don't know, um, staying break even, um. Is that, easier said than done. That's another big step. You know what I'm saying? Trading. Exactly. That's, that's a big step so to be there's there's a trading um there's like a trading kind of map I like to say that I've seen been going around um on social media. Um, let me see if I can find it here. But um, it, it literally shows like a little graph of like you know the journey of a trader. And like now that I'm like a little like two years in, it I can see that it's so fucking true. Like you're you're coming down up onto you know getting like halfway up there, and then you're hitting break even, and then at that point, once you're getting to break even, I feel like it's literally all about the psychology. Because at that point, you know how to trade, you know how to do everything else. It's just about fine tuning the game. You're right there. You're right there. Once you start getting break even, break even, break even, you know you're you're on the you're on the tip. Of the fucking tongue right there. No, you're exactly right. Like, with that. Literally, you're like, exactly right. 100. You know, like as far as you're saying, like you know, it's it's all your psychology at yeah. that point, and it completely is because just getting to break even is like very difficult. Like, yeah, it's man. Like very difficult to do that. And people think it's it's easy, but it's right. it's not. You got to actually take into account like all of your trading, not just the the winners you was hitting. Right, the losers. You take in all the losers yeah. too, and that still comes out to break even. Yeah, like that's like okay, shit, I'm. I'm on to something. Exactly. You know, I know what I'm doing. Exactly. And then you'll, you'll see yourself eventually start getting profitable and stuff. We've all been in a profitable yep. place. But that's another thing about trading, too. It's like your life works just like the markets, man. There's highs and there's lows. Yep. There's, there's fluctuations through it. Now, I feel but, like whenever I was profitable in the past, I was um, I want to say I was more lucky when I was profitable because it was the days to where I'd, you know, make, you know, let's say I'd make a grand. But, you know, like the next day I'd fucking completely wipe it out so like in a sense i was profitable but i feel like i was really just kind of getting lucky you know like i didn't i didn't necessarily know as much as i did now and now that i do know what i do now like it's just like a night and day yep the profitability and then something else i wanted to say too whenever we're talking about risk management is your uh capital preservation which is basically they basically the same thing but so whenever we're talking about risking like you know let's say you're doing one percent per trade right whatever it may be let's say you get down two or three percent on your account and now that one percent's hurting a lot more than yep. what it did yep. originally that's a good time for you to reassess and be like hey i'm gonna cut down on size i'm about to go mm-hmm. half percent yep. whatever it may be or let's say you want to be conservative you just start a 100k challenge or you just put a thousand dollars into your your weeble and yeah. you're ready to go to trade options start off with half a percent risk first until you get to that like five percent in profit maybe 6% profit, whatever it works for you, 3% profit, yep. work, whatever, and then work your way up to, you know, 0.75%, a percent, whatever it may be. But that's another part of uh, risk management. I just, yep. wanted to put and that I just it think it's always have to be, oh, I'm risking 1% right. every trade all the time. That's just how it is. Right. And then, so I just think it's a lot, it's like we always say, it's a lot easier said than done because, you know, people want to make the money so quickly uh-huh. and they, and then they size in too quickly. And then that used to be me, dude. I used to fucking damn near go all in like all the time. Fire. You finna you know get burnt, saying? bro. Exactly, they right. Burnt so the more experience you get as a trader, the more and more that it becomes a reality that this game is about base hits. Yeah. It's not about oh, home yes, runs. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like 100%. you're going to get a home run every once in a while, but it's you. the base hits are what's going to add up. The and base you, hits, man. And you post it. You post it all the time. I love that you post it. You say the process over profit process over profits bro. baby and that's so fucking true if you cannot fall in love with the process of this you're not going to make it and that's I'm just, what i'm, I'm saying just being 100 yeah. it's not going to happen like you have to love the process if you're just chasing the profits yep. the whole time bro like i said earlier play with fire and you're going to get burned yep. like they, they, those are the people that come in 
And they say like they, they take some huge L's, lose their money. They'll make some dubs and then they'll lose all their money. Like, oh, this is fake. This is a scam. Yep. This shit don't work. Blah, blah, blah. blah. It's, it's like, gambling, dude, this yeah. and that. It's like, it's like, what would you expect whenever you half-ass something? You exactly. Didn't, you, didn't put your, you didn't treat it like a business. Right. Like, and this is, and bro, we this always is, say yep. it, treat it like a business. Yep. Like, treat it like something that you really fucking care about. And this is the hard night, dude. No, nothing. 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 Night, that's what a lot of people need to get. Like, yeah. Even in, even in, in your own business. You know right. what I mean? Your business isn't going to take off from one day to the next. Exactly. Yeah, and then right. keep in mind, dude, like... People go to school, my man, for like four to five years mm -hmm. to, you know, get out of there and, you know, make a salary. And it's just like, why why would you not be willing to give trading four or five, four or five of your years of your life to and, and why would be you, free? And why would you not treat it the same either? Like, yeah. like, like this is whenever we talk about discipline, discipline is so huge. Like, why do I feel like so many people need somebody to hold them accountable? And it's like. Not even like whenever it comes to this trading stuff, like there's nobody yep. there to be like, hey, are you getting the chart time? In? Yep. Hey, are you do you know have you have you been practicing proper risk management? Hey, are you listening to your rules? Like you yep. following your rules? No, it's just you. Yep. Like you learn. That's why they say traders learn the most about themselves, like being a trader. And that's for damn sure. It, that, open, it yep. opens up your it opens up your own mind to all of your own flaws. That is for so, damn sure, right there, buddy. Let me yeah. tell you, if you don't know who you are, go learn how to trade. I bet you, you find out real quick. One hundred percent. It makes you more of a man at the end of the day. Real quick, you'll but find yeah. out real quick. If you're not disciplined with something's going on. I can for damn sure tell you trading ain't gonna work out for you. But anyways, we're getting towards the uh the end of this podcast. Yeah, Pass yeah, it over to Ray. Hit the <laughs> outro. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh tuning in uh to this week's show of Let's Talk Trading. Next week we're gonna be talking uh a little bit about the different assets that you can trade as well as the pros and cons of each one. Um and like I said, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully you'll enjoy um, this uh, this podcast uh, a little bit better than the last one. I think they'll yeah. like it. We uh, we kind of yeah. fucked around in here a little bit, yeah, but I think it was, was a definitely, vibe. Definitely more uh, of a laid back, relaxed yeah. podcast. Obviously, we try to keep some professionalism in our podcast, right, but you right. know, this one is just you know more of a relatable one, man. That's what I'm you saying. Know? Look, this is about being relatable to people who are who want to learn how to trade and who exactly. think they have to yes, be in a bro. fucking suit. Oh, my God, Wall Street, no. this and that. No, bro, we ain't here chilling. Exactly. And just, <laughs> and just so y'all guys know, like, normally, like, with all of our pods, bro, we'll have a call, before, like, the day before. Yeah. We're going over yeah. everything we're going to talk about in the pod. What's good? What's not? What are we cutting? What are we keeping? And we're trying to, to keep it yeah, relatable but, to everybody. Exactly. But today, like, on this one, it wasn't one of those. It was just, hey, let's come in. Or today, are we was ready? Pretty, today was raw dog. Yeah, much. raw dog. Raw dog. Because yep. everybody has different schedules right now. Normally, right. normally, we've always been aligned. All our schedules have been yep. everywhere. Where, but yeah, but Jose, yeah, like Jose got blessed with the opportunity that he's that he's yeah. in right now. Yeah. He's a uh, he pretty much went full time uh hot shot and he's yeah. on the way to Louisiana right now. I yeah, mean, what yeah. are we gonna do? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's it is what it is. And that's what we want everybody to know that we're we're just like anybody else, dude. We yeah, have, man. Mm -hmm. We got. Nine to, nine to five yeah. jobs. Uh, like Trent's about to go to the restaurant right now. Yeah, like, exactly. Literally yeah. right after here. And we be catching Ray work. for fucking Reyes. That's bro, what, I'm you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. you know, we're not out here some rich kids who has you know money to fuck around with from their parents. And, and if y'all and, and if y'all in the area and y'all listen and y'all want to pop up or some. Just hit us up. We yes, can, sir. We can uh, do some. Papa Do's, uh, 1960. <laughs> oh, Papa Do's, nah. Kitchen. I said we could, we could get lit at Reyes, do something, talk about you. <laughs> nah, come, hey, come and see me. Come, come, come and see me. Come yeah. get some profit at Too Faith. But all right, man. Y'all be safe, man. All right, y'all get say? it in. What yes, sir. And uh, just remember, man, it's possible, it's baby. Possible. It's possible. It's possible. Right. That's right. Everybody have a good one.